بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم احمد هو وصلي على رسول الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم i today want to talk about the end of nation states we're coming to the end of democracy and we are also coming to the end of nation states but it is so interesting because as i will show you from the verses of the Quran and from the sayings of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu that this is what it, it indi indicates okay so now let us look <coughs> in ayah number 59 of Sutul Kahf first we will look وَتِلْكَ الْقُرَى these were towns أَحْلَكْنَاهُمْ we destroyed them لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا when they did wrong when they did oppression وَجَعَلْنَا لِمُحْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا And we have set a time for their destruction. Okay? So, this is the principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The general principle is that when nations do wrong, and I'll show you specifics just in a little bit, but when nations do wrong, they do come down. And this is a very common theme within the Qur'an. Okay? It take, may take time, but it will happen. So if you do, if any nation that is doing wrong, they will be brought down. Nations will be judged in this world. And individuals will be judged in the hereafter. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said this. Now, let us look at another verse of the Quran on this issue. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in regards to the end of times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ There will be no city. إِلَّا except نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا We will completely destroy it. قَبْلَ Before. يوم, يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Before the Day of Judgment. Okay. In, in, there will be no city on the face of this earth. Tokyo, Islamabad, you know, uh, uh, Istanbul. No city except we will put it into shambles. Even their ahadith that Makkah will be in shambles. Even their ahadith that Medina will be in shambles. So, in nahnu muhlikuha, there will be no city except it will be put into shambles. Qabla yawm al qiyamah, before the day of judgment. Or at least mu'adhibuha adhaban shadida. Allah will give it a severe punishment. عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا A severe punishment. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْطُورًا And that is already written. It is مَسْطُور. It is already written in the book. It's going to happen. Every single country, you know, will what? Will be destroyed. And over here, I just want to share with you. Uh, let me actually uh, go on to the next narration of the Prophet wasallam. This is a very famous one that Shaykh Imran Hussain has also talked about in some detail. But the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imran al-Bayt al-Maqdas, the rise of Israel. Little Israel will go up. Will be what? Kharabul Yathrib. Will be the destruction and the desolation of Yathrib. Because we will, as an Ummah, no longer deserve to have Medina anymore. وَخَرَابُ الْيَثْرِبِ And the destruction of Medina Yathrib will be خُرُوجُ malhama. The point being here, if Medina if Medina goes down, you can be sure that Saudi Arabia goes down. If Saudi Arabia goes down, America invested in its oil. There's no way that America will let Saudi Arabia go down unless itself is having problems. And if Saudi Arabia goes down, it means all of its ally countries with, has alliance within the nearby regions will also probably, likely go down. But Allahu Alam. Let me just share with you some more sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. When the Mahdi comes, okay, I'm going to show you this part about him. When فَإِذَا رَأَ النَّاسِ When the people will see that he is the Mahdi. 
فَإِذَا رَأَنَّا ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ When they see this, that he's the Mahdi, آتَاهُ أَبْدَالُ الشَّامِ The people who are true servants of Allah, they will come to the Mahdi from Sham, from Syria. Was أَصَائِبٌ أَهْلِ الْإِرَاقِ Any small group or small smaller groups from the people of Iraq, they will come to the Mahdi in Mecca. فَيُبَايِعُونَهُ And they will give bayat to him, allegiance to him. Now, let me ask you this question. If somebody today wants to walk from Iraq to Mecca, can he? Why? Because nations, boundaries exist, borders exist. You can't go. You can't go from Syria to Mecca. How is it that they see something or hear about something and then they can just go? So, let us now look at another tradition of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, this is about the hadith of Khurasan. Let me show you the uh, hadith. When the Raya'at to Sud from Khurasan they come, okay, what? Those armies will travel to the Mahdi and nothing will stop them, right? Again, a sign that nation states will not be existing and they'll be far smaller units okay okay and then let me show you another tradition of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh and in this hadith the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam let me show you in english also okay when the black banners will come from the east they will kill you in unprecedented manner okay why will they kill you in an unprecedented because you'll be on the wrong side and then he mentioned something I do not remember, the narrator says. And then he went on. When you see them, then pledge your allegiance to them if you have to even crawl over snow. So why does the Prophet say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, crawl over snow? Number one, places of snow will offer a protection, other places will not. And number two, the Prophet's telling people, you can reach the Mahdi. There will be no borders. Nation states will have fallen nation states would have failed okay and so when you see them pledge your allegiance to them even if you have to crawl over ice for that is the khalifa of allah the mahdi let me also share with you another narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam let me give it to you in english first syria will be conquered and some people will go out of Medina along with their families driving their camels. And Medina would have been better for them if they did but know it. Syria will be conquered and people will leave Medina and go to Syria for a job. The, then Yemen will be conquered and some people will go out of Medina along with their families driving their camels and Medina would have been better for them. Then Yemen will be conquered and what? People from Medina will leave and go to Yemen. Then Iraq will be conquered. And some people go out of it along with their families driving their camels. And Medina is better for them if they did but know it. So before the Mahdi comes, there will come a time where these Arab lands will be conquered. And what? They will leave Medina. It will be more prosperous to leave Medina. And uh, if you tie in things... You know, the Jal's plan to enter Medina includes the idea of trying to get people out of Medina. And there's narrations about this, but I'm not going to talk about this right now. Just some narrations I want to share with you. The Prophet said, Sallallahu so I'm just giving the English right now. Definitely one of your troops would do a war with India. Allah would grant success to those warriors as far as they would bring their kings by dragging them in chains and fetters and Allah would forgive these warriors. Okay, So the point, another narration, a king of Jerusalem would make troops move forward towards India. The warriors would destroy the land of Hind would, uh, and would possess its treasure, treasures. The king would use these treasures for the decor of Jerusalem, to decorate Jerusalem. And the troops would br bring the Indian kings in front of the king of Jerusalem, meaning the Amir, right, of Jerusalem, which is the Mahdi. 
and his warrior and his warriors by the king's order will conquer all the area between the east and the west and they will stay in india till the coming of the jad in another narration these are all by nuaim bin hamad some people of my ummah will fight india allah will grant them success even they would find the indian kings being trapped in fetters allah would forgive those warriors and they would move towards syria and when they get to syria they would find isa ibn maryam in there again these uh may be weaker narrations but they're pointing to together they're not that weak because they're all saying the same thing but they're pointing to a situation where there are many warlords in india okay and they're being brought to jerusalem to pay for their crimes because they're going to have to pay for the crimes that they would have done against the muslims by that time okay so nation states you know uh saudi arabia down uh iraq down yemen down syria down and if these nation states go down if the whole petrodollar system goes down then that means it's going to be a big problem for america and then the whole world and so let us look at another narration the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam black flags from khorasan will come and nothing will stop them okay there'll be nothing to stop them and then over here i want to mention very very quickly uh let me share with you uh this these some of these narrations of nuaim bin hamad abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu he mentioned the first people to perish will be persia so you know they want to fight against iran and then the arabs so this will be all desolate there will be no nation states and then uh i mentioned some of the narrations of india uh but we can go ahead and uh this is a narration at the hands of a khalifa who is a yemenite will raid on india concerning which abu hurairah spoke about the prophet said so allah a group of my community will raid india so allah will conquer it for them such that they will bring back the kings of india fettered in chains god will forgive them for their sins they will return to see syria and find isa alayhi salatu wasalam over there okay so now uh let's go back to uh the quran okay and uh, the quran tells us um uh, allahumma salli ala muhammad okay that all the jews all the jews have to go back to israel wa ja'nakum lafifa allah says wa ja'nakum lafifa so allah said قلنا من بعد لبني إسرائيل and after that we said to بني إسرائيل أسكن الأرض live in the earth in different parts of the world right فإذا جاء وعد when my promise comes the one in dunya وعد الآخرة the second promise or, or the other promise جعناكم لفيفا will bring you all together from the different parts you will be in you all gather here why you see uh, the Jewish community in America for example or Britain or France or wherever they're very well to do they have good high positions they have good influence they have good power they they're not going to leave those places until those places themselves are in a state of crisis where they think you know what i'm getting a free passport to go to israel anyway it's called elia right i'm getting a free passport to go to israel anyway so i might as well just go because it's so bad over here in another uh verse of the quran let me share with you okay um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim inna mathalu al-hayati ad-dunya kama in anzalnahu min as-samaa'i fa akhtalata bihi nabatu al-ard so the example of the life of this world is it rains and people eat from the crops and then what happens and then the second phase is hatta idha akhadhat al-ard zukhrufaha wa zayyana then they make then the things from the earth start to come out and beautify the earth this this the first phase is agriculture until the ottomans the whole the whole history was based upon agriculture then after the ottomans or during that shift that transition 
you know, oil started coming out, uranium started coming out, copper, iron, all these things, digging things deep from the earth and bringing out the, the things and then making the earth beautiful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this will reach its peak until what? Until and its people will think they have full control over this. And this full control is that leads to that oppression that the Quran earlier talked about that I mentioned. Then our command will come on the day side or the night side of the earth. They'll, it'll be as if there was no yesterday. There was no technology. There was no nothing. And then you also read the ahadith about how they will fight. They will fight with swords and they will fight with horses. The people with the Mahdi will be the best horse riders. The Jal will be killed with the sword. Why? Because those that infrastructure that the nation states offered will no longer be there. And so it'll be easy to go from Syria to Mecca or from Iraq to Mecca. Persia would have been destroyed and people, the whole world will be changed in the next 20 years. In the next 20 years, the whole world will be changed. And so those of us that are young or not young, get ready for the ride because you're going to need a lot of du'as, a lot of athkar, and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Qur'an, a lot of Qur'an, a lot of Qur'an for your journey. Because strange things are happening at the individual level, at the family level, people getting divorced for no reason. Strange things are happening at the international level. And the world for the next 20 years is, you know, is, is going to be on a very strange ride. And it's going to be very whole, harder and harder to hold on to the deen and Islam. Anyway, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah guide all of us. May Allah have mercy upon all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to really build a relationship with Quran. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, really help us to establish strong uh, salah prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a strong relationship uh, with the Qur'an, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for his works. Inshallah, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, ya Rabb. But I wanted to share with you a little bit of a picture that is coming in the very near future, not far off, that nation states will no longer be. And that is where it seems like things are going. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.